How's it going? It's Jim today and we're looking at two bikes that are $1,000 apart in price. I'm not going to tell you which bike is which right off the bat, but you might know if you've seen some of my other videos. Uh, this is the Aoster Motor S05 and this is a Surface 604 Shred. Um, I want to show you kind of what you get for paying that extra money and you know where you don't see that difference. Um, I, I just want to make a quick note. I still consider this a $1,500. Oh, geez, I just gave it away. So this, this bike over here is $1,499. This one is $2,499. Now, $1,499 for a lot of people that are, especially if you're newer to the e-bike world and maybe you didn't do a lot of biking before e-bikes made it a little more accessible, is be like, no, that's still a really expensive bike. Well, if you keep in mind the most like good bike shop bikes, you know, are somewhere in the $500 to $1,000 range for a good quality bike. Um, it starts to show you how some of these bikes, especially, you know, even bikes that are cheaper than this, like some of the electric, some of the other bikes, you're either having some sacrifices in some of the com component quality or, you know, the electronics or, or the frame. You have some sacrifices somewhere to come in at that price point. With that out of the way, I just want to tell you the things that you don't get for $1,000. These both have geared 500 watt rear hub motors. These both have 48 volt, this 14 amp hour, this actually has 15 amp hour battery. So similar battery capacity, though you have Samsung cells over here and unlabeled cells over here. And, you know, a similar geometry, right? You both have, these are both mountain bikes, even though this is a full suspension mountain bike and this is a hardtail mountain bike. So you might think, initially you might have thought this one would be more expensive. So now I'm gonna take the camera and show you the differences and then I'm going to follow this up with like, could you spend a thousand dollars and make this bike more comparable to this bike? Um, first, a few things you actually get on this bike that you don't get on the bike that's a thousand dollars more. This has both front and rear integrated lights. This has just a front integrated light, even though it's not on this particular demo model. Um, the seat's comfortable. The stock seat on this one was not that comfortable. Um, I changed it already. So seats are very individual, so I don't, that's not a big factor to me, but just something to note. And wire management is actually better, a bit better on this one than on the surface bike, which is kind of just using some Velcro straps. This has some nice mining of the straps and we'll get, uh, of the cables and we'll get to there in a minute. All right, so the significant difference back here on the derailleur, this is seven speed versus a nine speed. Also, the style of bottom bracket, this is a kind of a standard sealed bottom bracket with a square taper crank arms and a plastic bash guard. Well, the Surface has no bash guard, but it's got nine speeds, a much upgraded rear derailleur and crank arms and a external bottom bracket. We got a, a basic Suntour fork up at the front with a quick release axle. 26 inch rims, pretty good tires and reinforced eyelet rims. A nicer fork with rebound and lockout and a through axle up there on the front forks. We got nicer 27.5 inch tires with CST tires. Uh, we got 180 millimeter mechanical brakes here on the front. Got the cadence sensor there on the crank arm. The controller is mounted in that box there beside the, uh, above the kickstand. Where you got that center spring on this one and a rear 160 also mechanical disc brake with a bolt-on axle in the rear and that quick release in the front over here we got a nice through axle in the front we got dorado hydraulic disc brakes which are have a really good feel got that external bottom bracket a little rear mounted kickstand and of course that 180 millimeter disc brake in the rear Battery wise, we got that Dorado style battery. My on the Aester motor, we have a kind of in, more interestingly shaped battery. It takes two keys and not quite as easy to remove. Handlebars on the Aester motor. Got a black and white display, throttle over on the right. Uh, not quite as nice of a shifter, not nearly as nice of a shifter. Nicer keypad, a thumb throttle, much nicer shifter. Locking grips, good feeling brakes, and a color display. Though, though this uh, color display is actually not quite as visible as a black and white display. 
week cable routing I was talking about and the cable routing on the Oyster motor. The biggest difference between these bikes is really riding it. The riding experience on this bike is so much more really intuitive. It's a torque sensing bike, so it's responding to how much you're pushing on the pedals. So you can ride this in the highest assist level and, and ride slow and then push it and then ride faster. This one, you're really, the electronics are telling you what speed you're gonna ride at. Um, and there's also more flexibility on, you know, with the throttle and that kind of thing that's available at assist level zero. So with just human power and adding some throttle, this does not have throttle available at assist level zero. Um, but the biggest difference is riding experience, the way the components work, it's just a more refined experience. So the biggest difference between these two bikes during riding from a riding perspective is the way the assist engages. This feels much more natural to me anyway. Um, depends on your riding style. If you're a throttle only rider, you might not even need any different. <laughs> this bike probably just works just fine for you. And if you ride pretty fast, if you're just okay with where the assist level cuts out and it works for you, this could work out really well. See my full review of this bike if you're curious about some of that. So now the question is, what would it take to get this bike to be closer to this bike? So I put a list, I'll put a list up here on the screen and I pulled uh, prices off of Amazon. Uh, unfortunately, that's the easiest place to find some of these small parts these days. Your local bike shop probably be a little more expensive than these prices listed. So somewhere between $500 and $800 to upgrade most of the parts. That's not trying to upgrade the wheels and tires, that's suspension, brakes, shifter, that stuff. Is somewhere in the 500 800 range so then you're like ah, well you know that starts to be the different difference doesn't feel quite as much and then that's not even counting the time it would take you to make some of these changes and the, the one thing i do have to really point out about that is a lot of these bikes now have a lot of internal frame routing which is nice from a visible perspective but it can be really difficult especially if you if you wanted to try to change these mechanical brakes to hydraulic disc brakes and Knowing that you need to use these uh, electronic cutoffs, it might be easier to use what I have, a, I have a cost for, some nice, avid, uh, cable actuated dual piston brakes um, that should get you a pretty good braking experience. Um, of course, know that all these parts, I tried to make sure they would be, uh, would work with this bike, but I didn't, I haven't, I haven't tested them. So if you buy them, please don't say, hey, you said this was gonna work. Check fitment for yourself, please. Um, but the question is, is a thousand dollars more worth it to you? That's really going to be your, your call, I guess. Um, but this is what you get for a thousand dollars. And now weight wise, this, this bike is 64 pounds and this bike is 59 pounds. Some of that weight is probably related to the frame itself and all the components. When you, the, the slightly nicer components tend to weigh a little less. So some of that weight difference, you might, you might get them closer to weight, uh, you know, to work for you. Um, one of the big things, if you're actually gonna do trail riding on this, is you, you know, the 26 inch tires start to, the 27 inch tires, 27.5s roll over things a little bit better than 26 inch tires. So, you know, if you're a hardcore mountain biker, I mean, that's gonna help you make this decision even better than somebody who's wanting to like commute on it. And from a commuting perspective, this bike doesn't have any mounting points for anything. Uh, the surface bike has rack mounting points, has a bottle cage mounting point, albeit in a weird position on that underside of the down tube, uh, but it has some of that stuff. You can see I added a little mount anywhere, a bottle mount. That these don't work that well, but they work. So I hope to help you out with this kind of stuff. If it helps you, let me know. I can do some sort of comparison between scooters as well or other bikes to see what the price jump is and you know, maybe maybe help you out so that's what i'm trying to do so like and subscribe do all that leave a comment i'll do my best to answer it i try to answer everyone and uh i'll talk to you then thanks a lot